Hi, um, my name is Victoria Ruffing and I am a nurse board certified in rheumatology. I'm at the Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, USA. And today I'm going to talk to you about discussing JAK inhibitors and their risks uh, with, with your patients. Talking to patients about biologics and small molecule therapy, it, it can be difficult. And when it comes to JAK inhibitors, data from the oral surveillance study has shown an increased risk of untoward events, especially in older men, those with a history of smoking, those on aspirin therapy, and those with at least one cardiac risk factor. These data and the boxed warning on JAK inhibitors necessitate a serious conversation with patients before beginning JAK therapy. Studies from the Health Literacy Act in the United States demonstrate that as healthcare providers, we incredibly overestimate the literacy that patients have regarding their health care. Immunology is incredibly complex and not well understood by the average patient. We have to develop ways to convey the risks and benefits of biologics and small molecules in a plain and simple language. It might take some practice to refrain from using scientific and medical terminology with our patients. Nurses, uh, like myself, have a strong background in patient education, and I hope to provide a few tips on explaining JAK inhibitors. The first thing I do is start with uh, an analogy. Uh, I say to the patients, think of the immune system as a series of messengers, and the messages have to travel back and forth to increase inflammation to stop a foreign invader. But in the case of someone with an autoimmune disease, the body is constantly sending these messages even though there is no foreign invader. JAK inhibitors are medications that will help quiet the messages. The benefit of the quieting of the messages is to decrease inflammation leading to less swelling and pain and increasing your function. However, because of the action they take, JAK inhibitors may have some serious side effects. So that's kind of the way I just lay the, the, the groundwork for the, uh, the, the side effects that I'm going to, to discuss. So here are some of the key side effects and the points that I wanna to emphasize to the patients. Uh, like most patients for, for any inflammatory arthritis, uh, they may be at a higher risk for infection. So I inform them that we're checking their TB and hepatitis status before we begin any medications. We get a history of risk factors, like a risk for fungal infections, and we ask them to keep us informed of any infection requiring an antibiotic because we may need to adjust their medications. I also, in this point, might mention the risk of zoster and the importance of zoster uh, vaccination. As we go through all of the different risks, you also want to mention what we're doing to mitigate the risk. So the second point would be the slightly higher rate of cancer, including lymphoma, in patients taking JAK inhibitors. Um, Many patients may not even realize that they are at a greater risk for lymphoma because of their inflammatory arthritis. And this would be a good time to review that risk and explain to patients that through periodic physical examination and blood work, we will look for any signs of cancers. The next thing is there's a slightly higher risk of death and cardiovascular events than in some other treatments. This includes heart attacks and strokes. The American College of Cardiology has available to anyone a cardiac risk calculator. It's called the ASCVD Risk Calculator Plus. This can be helpful in understanding better the risk of the cardiovascular events. Uh, you simply plug in the risk factors 
like smoking, aspirin therapy, etc., into this calculator, and it will give you a percentage of, of risk. And this may be shown to the patient. Uh, you can bring this up on, you know, if you have a, you know, if you have a computer in the room with the patient to help the patient understand the degree of risk. Um, the next thing are blood clots. I would use the word clots. Um, if you talk about thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, patients are probably not going to understand that, but they do seem to understand the word clot. So you want to talk about the, the risk of clots. And the last thing I would talk about is non-melanoma skin cancers and of their need for yearly exams. So lastly, I recommend explaining to patients all medications carry both risks and benefits, but improved quality of life, enjoying leisure time, continuing to work, preventing disability and loss of function need to be weighed against the possible risks in deciding their therapy plan. Thank you.